All right, let's take a look at some more antiderivatives. So let's find the antiderivative of quantity x cubed plus 4x squared, where our deriv differentiation is taken with respect to x. Notice that when we indicate the antiderivative, we do have a parentheses around the function whose antiderivative we're looking for. If you leave off those parentheses, it becomes a statement that doesn't make any sense mathematically. So those parentheses are very important. So First thing to note here, again, a little bit of analysis goes a long way. I'm anti-differentiating a sum of two terms. And I think back through my derivative rules, the derivative of a sum is the sum of the two derivatives. And so what that suggests is that if I want to find the antiderivative of a sum, I can find the sum of the antiderivatives of the two addends. So here I'm adding x to the third, 4x squared, and so if I find the antiderivative of x to the third and the antiderivative of 4x squared, then I should find the antiderivative of the sum of the two functions. So let's start off with x to the third. So x to the third is an x to the n type function. So I might start off by looking at the derivative of x to the fourth, which gives me 4x to the third, close but not quite. And if I want to get closer, I'll multiply by 1 fourth on both sides. That gets me my x cubed, and I have constant times derivative is the same as derivative of constant times function. So antiderivative of x cubed is 1 fourth x to the fourth. Likewise, I'm looking for a function whose derivative is 4x squared, and that's constant times function, and the type of function is an x to the n function. So again, I might start with an x to the n plus 1. So if I want a derivative x squared, I'll start with derivative of x cubed, and that gives me derivative 3x squared. Not quite what I want, but I can modify it by multiplying by 4 thirds, both sides, and that gets me over on the right-hand side what I want as the derivative, and over on the left-hand side, constant times derivative of function, which is the same as derivative of constant times function. So again, what do I have? Well, the derivative of 1 quarter x cubed is x cubed, is the first term. The derivative of 4 thirds x cubed is 4x squared, is the second term. And the derivative of a sum of two functions is the sum of the two derivatives. So if I add those two functions together and differentiate them, I'm going to get x cubed plus 4x squared. So that tells me this function here whose derivative is x cubed plus 4x squared is going to be an antiderivative. So the antiderivative is this function plus any constant value. Well, how about some other functions? So for example, the antiderivative of sine of x. And so some functions you just have to recognize. So here I am looking for a function whose derivative is a trigonometric function. And I might not remember which one that is, but there aren't that many of them. So if I think about that, the trigonometric functions all have trigonometric derivatives. If I can't remember which one gives me sine of x, I can just find all of them. Uh, so what is it? Derivative of sine is cosine, not what I'm looking for. Derivative of tangent is secant squared, again, not what I'm looking for. Derivative of secant is a horrible mess, again, not what I'm looking for. Uh, derivative of cosine is almost what I'm looking for. Derivative of cosine is minus sine of x and almost counts in calculus. So let's see, I want to modify that. I want sine of x over on the right hand side, so I'll multiply both sides by negative one. And now I have constant times derivative of function. So I can move that constant inside the differentiation operator. And so the derivative of minus cosine x is sine of x. And so my antiderivative minus cosine x plus any constant c that we want. Well, how about the antiderivative of 1 over x? And I can do a little bit of algebra. 1 over x is the same as x to power negative 1. And I know what to do with an x to the n. I'm going to differentiate an x to the n plus 1. So negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So the derivative of x to the 0 gives me 0 x to power negative 1. And there's my x to the negative 1. And all I have to do is divide by 0 to get rid of this coefficient. Uh, except I can't divide by 0. So we have a problem with this one. 
And unfortunately, this is one of those antiderivatives that requires you to actually know something. And in this particular case, what you have to know is the derivative of log is 1 over x. So remember what this is asking for. You want to find a function whose derivative is 1 over x. So thinking about it, you know a function whose derivative is 1 over x. So the antiderivative of 1 over x is going to be log of x plus any constant that you want.